Well, isn't this an interesting title screen for a mod where the Axis won World War II? I guess the rest of the world still does exist, even if Germany and Russia are the main places of interest. Because yeah, today we take a closer look at Latin America. See what happens there? Of course they were involved in the later stages of World War II, but they definitely by no means were the major players in it. And to get the best experience, we will play as the strongest, or largest of the Latin American countries, Brazil. Yeah, recently the CSS flavor submod was integrated into TNO proper, so we're not even playing submodded TNO, this is just the official thing now. Which is nice, it's really good to have some content for Latin America and TNO. We've all had our fair share of Russia, of course there's still so much that I haven't done there, but it's nice to take a good vacation to Rio de Janeiro to have some fun. Or I guess, Brasilia, of course where our capital is now, you have to pick a central location in your country, it's um, deciding on where to put your capital 101. You can't emburden yourself with the distance decay, of course. But yeah, we'll start off with some fireworks in Rio, I guess we are in Rio, yeah. A year has passed and lot has gotten a lot of work done. <laughs> Opening Brasilia, managing the economy, beginning the construction of the Trans-Amazonian Highway, and dealing with the coffee strikes. After all this work, Lot is exhausted and needs a break. The New Year celebrations present the perfect opportunity for this. I like it, I like it. Brazil, it's in its own corner of the world, probably in the least affected continent from the Second World War. Of course, nuclear war will still end Brazil too, but you know. If anybody's gonna maybe have a chance at surviving the fallout, it's us here. I, I would think, I would assume. Apparently we have elections and a development edicts, which I will not mess with just yet, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but as in TNO, we of course have all these complicated mechanics that we will kind of ignore and kind of hope make sense as we keep going. Oh yes, it looks like there's an unstable relationship between the president and the vice president. Lot and Quadro are not good friends, it appears, even though they are president and vice president. Also, I just have to say, my least favorite part of TNO is how the civilian factories are green and the military ones are orange, well, just by the icons. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this in a video before, but I get confused just because I'm so used to the regular mills are green, sibs are orange color scheme. I, I, hate, I hate to admit it, but I've done that way too many times. It's not even funny. It's like, it's not even way too many times. It's literally every time. Oh yes, oh yes, my friends. This is a good sign. We have friends, friends in America, friends in the American intelligence agencies. They love us here in Latin America. They do everything they can to help us. They help suppress political parties, which may rise up and become a danger to the US and us, of course, too. You know? I love having friends in the CIA. I love how they type in all caps. I love how they give us these long reports that I, I can never bother reading. I I just love the CIA. Uh, thanks CIA. You you're, you were good. You were good to me in the one USA TNO series. Oh, those are the good days. Uh, Gordon. Yeah, and the most pressing struggle here in Brazil currently are pirates. Pirates in Africa, foreign merchants that are just stealing stuff and German warships, which, you know, Germany wins World War II and looks like this. There are gonna be a lot of German warships that we can't really do too much about, you know? They have all those U-boats, that they're gonna do something with them now. I guess we will deal with that, and then we will, um, deal with the president and the vice president who hate each other. And I like how we have two meters for the Brazilian armed forces, loyalty and nepotism. I guess we need high loyalty and low nepotism? Or maybe high nepotism, I, I don't know, that could be interesting. And the lights of Rio. We may be in a world that's kind of dark per se, but this place does have a lot of hope. Brazil was not kind to single mothers, but Francisca, surrounded by hope, felt accepted for the first time in decades. Things would be different tomorrow. She would take her children back to the cramped apartment they call home. Go back to six hours of sleep, desperately taken in between constant work. Go back to watching rich men walk past those even worse off than her without even a glance. 
But as she watched the brilliant light of a new year light up Rio's sky, and Siska thought about how things were slowly getting better. Every day, things seemed just a bit cheaper. Every paycheck, just a bit bigger. The world, just that tiniest bit more equitable. Despite everything, she was proud of her country. So long as Brazil kept to its course, Francisca might just be okay. We can hope. And Hitler names Goering his successor. Not, not good, but I guess who he names the successor really doesn't have much greater chance of actually winning. And we here in Brazil are very far away from Goering's Germany and will not have to deal with it ever, really. Most likely. Oh yeah, and hey, do you guys still want me to like go through Goering again, but on hard mode? That could be interesting, right? I guess if this video gets, I, I don't know, what's uh, 5,000 likes, I'll play Goering on hard mode. Yeah, that's very realistically attainable, of course. Okay. It looks like this is pretty simple for the most part, the election thing. We only have two buttons. We can slander people or campaign for people. Ah, some anti-lot propaganda. Lot seen with women half his age? Lot patriot or CIA spy? Well, the CIA spy part is true. Is the first thing true? Uh, maybe. I do like being a CIA spy, even though instead of campaigning for lot, I guess I'm campaigning for the social democracy. I guess I could just fail the campaign. Yeah, because I guess if I just fail the campaign, then Lot wins. Kind of want to be led by a CIA spy. That'd be cool. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess this is the Senate race, not the Presidente race or whatever. So yeah, our, our guy is safe. <laughs> CIA rule for years to come. Well boys, it's time to sink some uh, Nazi pirates. I love attacking the Nazi pirates. They're my favorite um, people to attack. They're raking in thousands of Reichsmarks per week. Uh, well, honestly, now that I think about it, this is TNO, so there will be a civil war in the gross Germanis Reich soon enough. Okay, so now we have to choose between two economy plans. One where we raise taxes, get more money into the hands of the government so they can deal with a debt crisis. The other one where we get more money into the hands of the workers and hope that through austerity we can uh, survive. The main factor here, though, is if we choose quantity Andres's plan, that may strengthen his influence. And I kind of like our current leader. I like his leader portrait, he looks cool, he's maybe working with the CIA, maybe. Or that might just be propaganda. So we'll, we'll choose this plan too, sure. Okay, and I'm beginning to comprehend the inner workings of Brazil here in Tieno. Our current president is a friend of the CIA and the Organization of Free Nations. Whereas Quandaras, on the other hand, is a friend of a different faction, the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere that's just called Daitoa Kaioken or something. Uh, something, but he likes Japan and maybe Germany too, so that's interesting. I don't think the CIA likes that guy. I, I, I would bet the CIA probably really doesn't like that guy. And that even if we do elect him, he may disappear rather quickly, if you know what I, I'm saying. Power in Brazilian politics can come from the barrel of a gun or from honeyed words to the rich and influential. In this brave new age, it could also come from the sight of adorable vegetarian bears from the distant orient. This is great, I love pandas, I guess. Maybe this Quandros guy isn't so bad, you know? He just wants to be friends with Japan so we can get our hands on some adorable pandas. It might be worth it, it might be worth it siding with the co-prosperity sphere. You know what, sign us up. We'll all bend the knee to the glorious emperor. And I just realized that the military is slowly growing restless, their loyalty is decreasing, and uh, the only way to increase their loyalty is to increase their nepotism, which seems like an endless cycle that'll eventually lead to us having a lot of nepotism. Also, I realized that Argentina is literally just pro-Axis anti-American, which I think it gives us a great opportunity because if we were to expand our sphere loyal to the United States as we are, it would in turn expand the US's uh, sphere so they may help us, you know? I feel like Nixon would love to stage a Brazilian takeover of Argentina. Huh? Well, I guess Brazil isn't even technically in the OFN, we're just like 
South Africa right now, receiving some help from the CIA. Because if you've played the South Africa path or seen a video on it before, you know that they do get some help from the CIA there too. Oh, and I almost forgot about our uh, our best friend in this mod, ah, Burgundy. It'd be it'd be interesting if they updated Burgundy too, so it had some missions so they could interfere in Brazil. I would love for them to interfere. That would be very exciting. But I guess if they do, it's obviously top secret. Oh, and the Americans are fighting a war on our border. This is marvelous. I love to see the Americans exerting their powerful influence over us here. We will support this American intervention. It's it's nice. Yeah, I love this. But how are we to grow more powerful in this world if not for the help of the Americans and the CIA? Of course we will make our stand eventually and they will know who is the true power of the Americas, but that, that'll be years to come later on in like the 21st century, I'm sure. Yeah, President Halat didn't enjoy much talking to the media. His television and radio speech offering praise for the American intervention had been done in his usual perfunctory style. A topic he hammered on was the Americans' willingness to oppose tyranny in all of its forms. Yes, that's why we like America, because they oppose tyranny. It's not because I just love them and love their strong leadership and Richard Nixon. No, it's not that. It's just that they're, they're good guys. And you know, if you, if you know me, you know that I always play as the good guys. And you know, sometimes good guys just have to invade foreign countries and intervene in their own affairs, you know, for the greater good. Ah, in the matter of oil, we're getting invested into foreign oil, I see. Ah, uh, we're becoming just like a daddy America after all these years. I didn't think it would be so soon. Or yes, I should actually just read the event and fig figure out what's going on. Oh, it appears that just the conflict between Italy and Turkey is causing a Slight crisis in the oil markets, which makes sense. Italy controls a lot of the oil. Okay, and here are the results. It looks like the guys we were campaigning for picked up quite a few seats. They're now in second place. It looks like we stole almost all those seats from our great CIA loving leader and gave them to the other guy who likes Japan and wants to become an imperial protectorate of the Emperor. Well, you know, you know, the co-prosperity sphere is rather nice. I do like their strong leadership. I could, I could, um, see myself, um, becoming a loyal subject of Japan, you know? It's, it's only a slight change. I'm sure they have intelligence agencies like the CIA that I can get along with perfectly fine. Oh, and Argentina was coup. General Poggi. I'm sure the Americans had nothing to do with this coup. The Americans would never coup a government that was anti-American. May have Perhaps a man desperately opposed to fascism is exactly what Argentina needs to leave behind the darkest times in its history, but rumors of his mental instability and chemical dependency have only increased and his lack of pragmatism and ability to come to understanding may cost him his power and goals. Ah, uh, he was definitely put in power by the Americans, I'm, I'm calling. And some fascist guy flees Paraguay, and South Americans look with concern at Uruguay today as representatives of many Marxist revolutionary groups across the continent meet. Oh yes, and we are finally dealing with the pirates. We've been going through a sequence of events, and now the pirates have almost been scattered finally. We are now able to shift our focus to scattering them once and for all. Ah, and the dock workers are striking. Unfortunate, I guess. Soldiers fight uncertain battles all the time, but never by choice, it's not my fight. Workers suffer, industry suffers, Brazil suffers, an army man fights his country's battles. We like sending in the army to deal with strike people. Well, we did um, just campaign for the communists after all, so maybe let's, let's not do that. And refusing to do that just made us lose a ton of political power and stability that we don't have. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was a bad idea. Anyways, that is the end of this for now. If you guys want me to continue, remember to give this video a like. If it gets 1500 likes, I'll make a part two where we continue to play Brazil and get into the interesting stuff. Or, I don't know, we can see if there's another focus tree beyond this one, which this is TNO, so it's possible. But yes, we'll, we'll see then. <laughs>